What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing tonight? I hope the weather isn't too cold or hot or crazy or snowed in wherever you're at. And I hope you're doing well. I remember being very vividly a little kid looking up at the sky, watching these planes pass by and was always especially fascinated by the contrail, how even though it might have been 10, 20, 50, 100, or even 200 lengths of the plane long, it always dissipated into nothingness at the end thereof. And there was gone without a trace, right? Not quite as fast as the plane was flying by, but almost the contrail would just get move with the plane, right? Disappear. That's not the case anymore these days. Well, for most of us anyway. I'll see these off in the distance. Once in a while. But when government planes fly by, they don't... They don't seem to leave this, this trail. I was sitting at Dolores Park once in San Francisco looking up at the sky and seeing exactly what you see here checking out the ladies and there was this younger girl that was I don't know I was bored so I figured I'd holler and we were talking a little bit and then I asked her to look at the sky and tell me what these were And she looked at me like, like I was crazy, like, what do you mean what they are? They just are. They've always been there. This, this, is, this is what planes do, right? I don't know. Maybe she was 10 years younger than I. But she had no clue that a world where this doesn't happen used to exist and still does a lot of different places. Not everywhere. That was her normal. And she didn't know anything before this, right? It was frustrating. It usually is. Right then and there, I know we won't be fucking, but hey. It was a little bit frustrating. <laughs> Conspiracy theory! What? Are you, what? What? International Cloud Atlas. I haven't investigated, but that kind of looks like the UN, judging by that Roman logo, whatever that is. Anyway, whatever the fuck it is, obviously, it ain't, planes don't fly on the same fuel they used to, right? Whatever this is, it's for damn sure ugly. And I don't want any of it on me. I couldn't live in a place that looked like that. It was just... It was disturbing. It was very disturbing to me. It didn't feel right. I had to go. I wanted this guy to look like... What it did when I was a kid. And... Well, sometimes it does. I've never seen this many rainbows. Never. Whatever they do to us, whatever happens with this man-made climate change. See how they see how they brainwashed you to accept this name, man-made climate change? And how it's your fault, right? Because <laughs> you eat too much meat and, you know, the cow farts. It's your car by electric. Homo 
homogenitus, homo homogenitus. However, the Romans would say this. Homogeneous. Man-made, right? Man-made. Climate change. Man-made climate change. It, if, it, if a damn sure is man-made climate change. If a damn sure is that. But th it, it's brilliant the way they got you to accept it. It is what it is, man. You know. And what it is is different levels. It's frustrating when people aren't on that level, on your level, right? Everybody knows what I'm talking about. When they're on the different level, different frequency, right? It's very frustrating. It turns me off. So Gassiev and Dortico are gonna fight. It's gonna be one hell of a fight, ain't it? See, this is what boxing's all about, man. But maybe we'll get into that some other time. You know, it's frustrating to be on different levels with people because there's some fans who say, Gassiev, you know, he just barges straight in, right? He's very... He just comes straight forward, right? Which makes him, I guess, basic and predictable and not that good. He just comes right in, barges through that front door, right? And if you actually watch the guy, I mean, he cuts off the ring very well, right? So that's lots of lateral movement. And... He goes laterally when he comes forward, looking to set up his punches. It's funny how people see different things, right? Or they don't acknowledge reality, or they make up their own reality. They create their own world. Because the truth might be painful, be it toxic clouds or boxing. Very good fighter. Uh, very much reminds me of Joshua. Not necessarily in the way they fight exactly, even though, well, they kind of fight the same way. Um, they do, actually. They're different also, but, but also because they're both very young and learning on the job. And doing a damn good job. Because for Gassiev to have beaten... Lebedev, um, at the age, how old was he, 24? I'm not sure. In Russia? I watched that fight again, and he clearly won the fight, man. Clearly. These, these scores were right on. These were perfect scores, I thought. This guy kind of came out of nowhere for me. I mean, I've been hearing his name. But he was never really promoted because he's with Cariba Promotions. But now that he finds himself fortunate enough, lucky enough to be part of the World Boxing Super Series, he's making some noise, and that's great. It's great for him. And he's got a lot of people excited about him, and... That's also great because he's an exciting fighter. He comes to bang. Uh, he says he's not like the other Cubans, like a lot of other Cubans. He's, he prides himself on being a little different and more exciting. And it's no lie. So I could understand people getting behind this guy because he's good. He punches hard. And people seem to have, a lot of people seem to have a fetish for Cubans. And that's great. 
me myself I appreciate Sullivan Barrera Luis Ortiz I appreciate those guys when they're in the ring but most other Cubans they got no balls they got no heart and they got no chin and well we don't really know about this guy do we I guess we'll find out how good his chin is there goes my microphone. Oh well. Low tech. I guess we'll find out how good his chin is, but Cubans aren't really known for their chins, are they? I was on the hangout talking about this fight a little bit. I'm gonna be I'm gonna try to be on the next hangout or, or the one after that or whenever BDA Boxing Debate Arena have their hangouts and I'm available. I'm going to be around. So uh, if you want to holler at me, rather than talking behind my back, come on through. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> you know, Dortico is 22-0 with 21 knockouts. And I'm going to rehash my thoughts as... I already made known on the BDA hangout in this video and I'm gonna keep talking about this fight because it's not really a 50-50 fight but it's very close to a 50-50 fight it's a competitive bout anybody can win this fight you really don't know who's gonna win and that's what makes it a great fight and both guys are exciting they punch hard and it's gonna be a good ass fight But anyway, one of the things, and I'm all over the place, but, you know, I make my own clouds, if you catch my drift. Homo, what was the name? Homogeneous clouds? Yeah, anyway, how about... Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> Part of the conversation on BDA's channel was um, Foul Pole Boxing made this comment in the, in the chat room that much of boxing is about chins and punching power. And, well, yeah, especially when you have 50-50 fights, right? Or close to it anyway, competitive fights and guys that punch hard. When they're, when they're both very good and it looks like a competitive fight, anybody can win, anybody can lose. They're going to find ways to land on one another and land some pretty good punches. And it really just might come down to who hits harder and who takes a better punch, which really go hand in hand, right? Because when you look at 22 fights with 21 knockouts, well, one thing you might wonder is... Well, most people are going to say, hey, he hits hard and that's it, right? And, and that's what you hear in, in videos. People who clearly haven't watched many of this guy's fights, like I haven't, I because had, I never heard of him. Well, you know what I'm saying. I had to go back and watch them. People who haven't done that, they just look at that. They saw his last fight or last couple of fights, and he punches hard, right? He put a chinny guy on his ass, right? And the guy couldn't get up. Kudryashov. Kudryashov. I hope I'm saying that right. Kudryashov. Um, when he got hit, he got hit kind of high on the cheek. And he seemed okay for a split second. And then his it was like a delayed reaction. His legs gave. And he just kind of crumpled. To, he didn't just drop to the canvas, right? He just kind of crumpled. He got up, but he was just drunk, right? He just... He got his lights not quite knocked out, but I don't know. It was a weird knockout, and, and he was a half a pound overweight on his first try. He had to drop more weight, um, so maybe he struggled a little bit at the weight, and, well, he has a tiny chin, guys. Why do you think 
Kudryashov. Let's see if we can find a picture. I don't know how my phone programmed for that to... I didn't do that. That page just like programmed itself into my phone and it just pops up. I don't know. Kudryashov. Look at that. That's before he grew his big beard, right? Look at look how small that chin is. Like the button's not very big and his jawline's kind of narrow. It makes it look like he has big ears that are that are sticking out, right? And they're not. They're regular ears. He just doesn't have a very strong jawline. He doesn't have He got no chin, right? What does that mean when 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 you say Oh, that chick got no ass, right? Of course she has ass. It's just a small ass, right? So when you say he got no chin, what are you talking about? Exactly. And he grew out this big-ass beard to pad that shit and hide it. Because it, it just doesn't look very good. So, how hard does he hit, right? But when you see 22 and, twin, 22 and 0 with 21 knockouts... You're impressed, right? This guy has tremendous punching power. He has to. One of the first things that I think of is, well, who's that one guy he didn't knock out? Edison Miranda. I was able to find, there's like four, four rounds of the fight up online and maybe some highlights. Go check it out. By the end of the fight, Miranda has got one of his eyes is closing. He's been taking some pretty decent punches. He was pushing Dortico back a lot, a lot, a lot more than Dortico was pushing him back. And, you know, for those of you who don't know, Miranda is a former middleweight who was knocked out by Kelly Pavlik. And fine, he was probably draining himself at 160, right? So his chin was probably not the greatest. Abraham didn't knock him out the first time they fought. But Kelly Pavlik knocked him out at 160. Artua Abraham could knock him out at 160 in the first fight. I think he got his jaw broken. But then they stepped up in weight to 168. And he stopped him. Right? Then, well, Ward can't punch. Butte can't punch, right? Stopped him in the third round. He got disqualified in the this Spain fight. Chilemba couldn't stop him, but Tony Bellew stopped, like made him quit basically. Started punching him hard, found a way to land his punches and and beat him. If Tony Bellew wasn't so drained at the weight at 170, go look at Tony Bellew at 175 and then go look at him now how healthy he looks in comparison to what he looked like at 175. Tony Bellew was draining himself. At 175. He was so drained. It's crazy. It doesn't even look like the same person. But, you know. So he wasn't the strongest guy down there. But he was able to hit Miranda hard enough to make him want to quit. Right? And then Miranda steps up to 200. And he looks tiny and fat. Not really fat, but he looks blown up. Like, he looks like Vinny Pazienza, you know what I mean? He looks blown the fuck up. And um, Dortico couldn't knock him out. And he was hitting him. So how hard does he hit? And then you look at the rest of his box wreck and all these dudes he stopped. And you watch some of the fights that are available. Well, you'll see that these guys' records are horrible. And they're getting knocked out by everybody. Even bums, right? And they have multiple knockouts. And you watch these fights, and these fights are getting waved off. These dudes aren't getting slept. Fights are just getting waved off because he's putting a beating on them. But sometimes they're not even buzzed. Like in his... Oh, wait. Like in his fight with um, Kalenga, who was a big, strong dude, a credible guy... 
right? He stopped him. He knocked him down in the second round. He showed you that he punches hard early. But then as the fight wore on, he really wasn't hurting him anymore. He was able to land a flurry of punches and hurt him late. Uh, but Kalenga wasn't that hurt, and he, was take, he had taken so many punches. They just stopped the fight, right? But, you know, Kalenga's wide open a lot of the times. It's not that hard to hit him. And, but he didn't get knocked out, really. He got stopped, but not knocked out. And Kudryashov was, you know, impressive KO. That was a true KO, but the guy got no chin. But what about Gassiev's chin? Not the best picture. Maybe we could find a better... Now, Lebedev has pound for pound one of the best chins in boxing. That's If you don't know that already, then you don't know Dennis Lebedev. But I would say his chin is top three in boxing. That's no joke, man. And when you look at it, like it's a massive jaw, ain't it? He got a big ass jaw. Gassiev's isn't quite as big, but it's bigger than a lot of other guys' jaw. His head's not that small either. So, he doesn't have a Lebedev chin, but it looks solid, man. I don't know why my phone does this. Why it's so difficult to see a photo full size look at that I mean that guy got slept right that guy got no chin either and his head is small but you know when he has a guy in front of him that's not cut from that cloth like Kudryashov I guess Kudryashov he's I mean he slept this dude right Kudryashov got up this dude got slept and when he goes to the body and hits people, like, they just can't take it. And Lebedev is a tough son of a bitch. I mean, he got up and he got hit to the body. Not as well, but he got hit to the body right after that a lot. And he made it through, man. But, what's his face? Vodarchik didn't want to get up. And Vodarchik looked scared in that fight, but he felt that power and he said, uh-uh. Probably could have gotten up, but I don't know. Maybe his legs were gone. I don't know. So, Dortico knocked out a bunch of bums, and, and a lot of his fights just got waved off. I've never seen him sleep anybody, you know what I mean? He hits hard early, but, you know... I don't think he hits as hard as advertised, because if, if he did, he should be stopping Miranda, right? And he hurt Miranda early, right? But then couldn't really hurt him late anymore, right? So he's dangerous early. He will hit hard early. But as the fight wears on, his power goes, man. It just goes. And every time he punches, he's a puncher. He, he's a boxer puncher, I would say. Just like Gassiev. Um, yeah. Yeah, Gassiev's counterpunching isn't prominent enough for me to say that he's just a puncher or that he's a puncher. He's a boxer puncher. Even though it's a more compound word, uh, it is a compound, it's a phrase, boxer puncher, right? They're two words. It actually implies more simplicity because it's a lead guy a boxer puncher is a lead guy that loads up on his shots a puncher is a guy that loads up on his shots but he will lead and counter He'll, he just punches right so anyway 
Not to say that he can't counter, and he's a decent counter puncher, and so is Gassiev, but they're primarily boxer punchers, and they, they come to bang, right? But every time this guy throws his punches, he's um he's got his mouth wide open. Every time. And if Gassiev was an excellent counter puncher, I guess not only when he... I guess his mouth is just open all the time. But hey. That is the case with a lot of black people, ain't it? Joking! Ha ha ha! Funny joke! Yeah! Lighten up, bitches! Anyway. Fucking faggots. Anyway. <laughs> God, I hate Americans. Not really, but you know what I'm saying. The, the American PC culture. I hate that shit. Look at this dude. That's how that's how we learn to punch, right? That's just how he punches. And if Gassiev were a great counter puncher, oh my god, look how wide open he is. Why isn't Kudryashov just drop the right hand right there, right? Boom. Not fast enough, right? He also clubs with a lot of his shots. As you see here, he's clubbing. So maybe that's part of the reason why he didn't knock out Miranda. But see, that's just the thing. When people say, oh, punching power, there's so much that goes into a, a knockout, high knockout ratio or any knockout ratio. Man, this motherfucker's mouth never closes, does it? That's a little bit disturbing. But, um, I'll oh, check that out. Bam. Um, yeah. We have yet to see how, how he takes a punch from a world-class puncher, because Kudryashov never really, never really hit him like that. He got him with some shots. He was outboxing him. But he never really chin checked them. And Gassiev will. I think Gassiev has a better chance of chin checking him. They probably both will chin check each other. But I think Gassiev is more likely to chin check Tortico and do it first. And you know why that is? Because he's very patient and judicious and. He doesn't waste his punches. While Dortico opens himself up a lot, right? He throws a lot more. So what you're going to see, if the patterns continue, is Dortico punching at his guard a lot, right? Because Gassiev, he, even though he comes forward, he comes forward behind a tight guard. And he'll be getting through partially, but he's not going to be chin-checking him, is he? But he's going to be opening himself, himself up, right, to keep this guy off of him. This guy that's coming at him with his hands up, right? He'll be getting touched. He'll probably get his eyes reddened. Maybe maybe he get his eyes closed. One of his eyes closed, depending on how long the fight goes. But he's going to be coming at this guy behind a high, high guard. And Dortico's going to be throwing a lot of punches to keep him off. And he's going to be looking for an opening to land his bombs. And he punches harder. And he's faster. He's got better punch technique. And Dortico punches with his mouth open. So, you tell me how the fight ends. You tell me how the fight ends, man. Unless Dortico is able to back him up and keep him backing up, it's not going to look good for him. And if Dortico couldn't back up Miranda very much, not late in that fight, and Miranda was able to get to the 10th round and not get stopped, why wouldn't this guy get to the 10th round if Miranda did? We'll see. But if he couldn't back up Miranda, is he really going to be able to back this guy up enough anyway? Maybe. But, you know, I'm just trying to be rational here and, and look at this fight for what it is. Um...
puzzle pieces, right? And then you look at the names on Gassiev's record. Yeah, he fought a bunch of bums, man. Some of these fights he fought were comical. The, the dude was like a fucking obese welterweight. Some of these guys, they look like they were obese welterweights. I'm not even playing. But he never had, he didn't have much of an amateur career, maybe just 30 fights or something like that. So he did a lot of that, a lot of bullshit, and then developing in, in the pros. But then he started fighting, you know, Felix Cora Jr. That was a big step up fight for him. And he passed with flying colors. Rodney Moore was another developmental fight. Isaiah Thomas was, you know, a step step up in kind of the same like Felix Cora Jr. Except... Isaiah Thomas really hasn't been tested, so you didn't know what you really had there, and maybe you were take, taking a, a risk, right? And then Jordan Schimmel had a shiny record, but really wasn't cut from that cloth. But he was, whatever, okay. He wasn't no bum bum. But then from that, he went to fight Lebedev, who even though he, he is long in the tooth and has taken some beatings, not many, but a couple beatings, and it's been in tough fights anyway. You know, and then he went to Russia to fight him. And I know a lot of people say, well, he's Russian. Not really. <laughs> he speaks Russian. Um, but he's more like Ahmadinejad than Putin, if, if you catch my drift. And, um, you know... He passed the fight with the test with flying colors, man. A lot of people think Lebedev won the fight. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Um, it was competitive. It was close, but not that close. It was a very good fight, right? So he beat Lebedev, who only had one loss that was not really a loss. And... Then he beat Krzysztof Wodacik, who's also way past his prime, but I would take Wodacik to beat um, Kudryashov. Yeah, just, I would take him to do to Kudryashov what he did to, was it Chakiev? Chakiev, or however you say his name? That guy? Yeah. Maybe not quite, because he's older, but he would have beaten him, I think. And, you know... He stopped Vodarczyk. He put Lebedev down. Um, and then really couldn't land those kind of punches on Lebedev anymore because he was protect protecting his midsection and moving a lot. But, you know, the power was troubling Lebedev. Lebedev, he was backing him up all night, right? He was backing up a fucking world champion. Not Kudryashov, who has been knocked out before. Kudryashov went life and death with uh, Durodola twice. And the first fight he died, but then he survived the second fight. But it looked like he might go at any point anyway in the second fight. He just got to Durodola first and adjusted a little bit, clinched and took breathers. But the man never had good stamina. Looks like he struggles to make the weight. His chin is tiny. It is what it is, man. He's not cut from that cloth. But Lebedev and Vodacic, they're both cut from that cloth, man. And you saw what happened. So this guy has to be the favorite, which isn't to say that he couldn't lose. Of course he can. But it's not too likely that he loses. You know, and... I just don't trust Cuban chins, man, because even big, strong guys, you know, tough dudes that that punch hard and, and you know, they come to fight like Barrera, you know, he, he gets knocked down a lot too, right? He gets up and, and he wins, but I'm telling you guys, those Cuban chins, they're not that good because these boys, when they're brought up in the Cuban system, they when they're making weight, they eat like one egg a day. They starve them. I'm sure that's changed. I hopefully it's changing, but they would starve these kids, and you know they never really fully developed. Their their growth was stunted, and and 
you know, they don't got the best chins, some of them. It's crazy for little developing kids to, to make them make weight. That's fucked up. That's child abuse. So fuck the Cuban boxing system. For that. But, um, unless it was just a propaganda, you know, Victory is My Duty, that documentary film. I'm sure a lot of you saw it. But anyway, Dortico's chin has passed the test so far, but who the fuck did he fight? Right? And when he fought a middleweight that could punch a little bit, he got backed up a lot and couldn't knock him out. So... If he finds himself punching a lot at Gassiev's guard, by the time it's the fifth round and on, his power is just going to slowly, slowly wane. And Gassiev's not as much because he picks his shots and, and you know, you got to favor him in this fight, man. And you got to do it by knockout, I would say. But it might be, you know, both guys have a puncher's chance. Let me put it to you this way. Both guys have a puncher's chance in this fight. But I think Gassiev's chance is significantly better because of all the things I had talked about. I hope to do some film studies to look at these puzzle pieces a little closer, but if you like to risk... I don't know, man. It, it's a risky fight to bet on, to be honest with you. It really depends on how Dortico comes to comes to fight. But I bet you the under on this fight is is pretty low. I didn't I didn't look at it, but it's probably pretty low. Maybe like the eighth round or something. I don't know. And um, but it might go the distance. It really depends on what Dortico does, because we know, you know, people talk about. Gassiev being more one-dimensional, which isn't exactly true. I don't think he could fight as well going backwards as Dortico can. But Dortico's not great at it either. He just isn't. He's better from what I've seen. But I've seen both of them fight going backwards. But Gassiev, no one's been, has been able to back him up. And if Dortico can't do it, Gassiev doesn't need to fight in different ways. He just needs to come forward and use that one dimension that he's practiced so much and gotten so good at, it's very difficult to back him up. You understand? So yeah, he's, he's not been forced to use his other dimensions and they're weaker dimensions than with Dortico. So Dortico is a little bit more versatile in a sense, but... And Gassiev is more of a specialist. It's not fair to say that he's one-dimensional because they have the same dimensions, these guys. And Gassiev is better at coming forward and he's better at going backwards. But they're, you know, they're two-dimensional, if you will. Maybe more than that. But they're exactly the same as far as dimensions go. So... And and still, I think with Dortico, his best dimension is coming forward. So, if he gets pushed back, that's not good for him. If Gassiev gets pushed back, that's not good for him, right? So maybe do bet on the under. Because <laughs> it looks like these guys are going to just clash, right? Doesn't it? Isn't that what everybody expects? I hope I've done a good enough job of explaining why that is and why I think who wins and yeah I'm looking forward to this one this tournament is just oh man if you're a boxing fan you're loving it thank you for listening catch me on uh, BDA's hangout don't duck me son <laughs>